it was a good time to be a dancer. The high energy, the music, the beat, the 808, the dancing, it was amazing, iconic, and spiritual. My name is Terrible T, and I was a dancer in the 90s. I was born in Castro Valley, California, and primarily raised in Oakland and Fremont area, the Bay Area. Definitely started dancing at an early age. I don't have any training, formal training. It was more self-taught, kind of watched and kind of put my spin on steps that I would see. One person that I definitely did watch was my older brother. He used to dance in Boogaloo, so I always wanted to dance once I seen that. I went to American High School, that's in Fremont, California. I was actually in sports. I played basketball, volleyball, ran track, not the cheerleader. Spirit Week, I always was the one that played Michael Jackson. <laughs> I love Michael Jackson. James Brown was another one that I definitely watched and, and loved his, his performance. You couldn't tell me on Saturday when Soul Train came on that I wasn't on Soul Train at that moment. My mother would be like, uh, can you move out in front of the TV? We'd like to watch it too. I wanted to be on Soul Train. I just knew I, I could be a dancer. MC Hammer was my first break into dancing for artists. I was actually introduced to him by Lloyd Johnson. He was in a club in San Francisco. It was at the Palladium. And I guess he seen me doing a step and not knowing, you know, I was hearing Ringham. And later on, he asked me to go to the studio and it was just to pick him up to go skating. And he was like, you were that girl from the club. And I was like, yeah. He was like, you mind showing us that step you were doing? And I was like, sure. And one thing led to another. And then he was like, you know, I'm getting ready to do this video. Would you like to be one of my dancers? And I was like, yeah. It was an MC Hammer video. It was actually the first one, which was the Let's Get It Started that we had did in Sweet Jimmy's. The first version of Let's Get It Started. The difference between the two is Sweet Jimmy's, we did the 12 inch version. Once it got to Capitol Records and they started blowing up, he wanted to do a remix. And the remix is what we did um, on tour. That was a long day <laughs> because we actually filmed some of it before the concert and then filmed it during the concert and then filmed it after the concert. <laughs> the first time that I seen it in the club, Hammy used to like to come in the clubs and kind of get a feel and see what everybody was doing. The floor was crowded. Once they put the song on, I believe it was Silks, all of a sudden you heard, Ah! And all of a sudden the floor got packed and people was just like, let's get it started. They was like, oh, and jumping around. They were excited and it felt good that we were a part of that. My favorite is let's get it started because it had the steps, the routine, plus you got an opportunity to freestyle. And that's one of my loves is to freestyle. In the beginning, it was a lot of sacrifice, a lot of struggles, because he was a new artist trying to break in. So we did what we can. It was a lot of faith, and the pay wasn't there right away, but he had this concept, and he had this dream, and you, you fed into what he was saying, and you, you believe that something is gonna come out of this. We didn't have the traditional studio, dance studio, to actually rehearse. We actually used Hammer's brother, Louis Burrell, which was Hammer's manager. He had an office building. So what we did was practice in one of the rooms and we actually used the windows for our mirrors. You shut off those lights, you can kind of see your reflection. Too Big MC, Too Big at the time, was over our practices. 
So we would get to practice maybe 12 o'clock in the afternoon. We had to practice until we didn't look at each other. You had to know that step without looking to see if you messed up. Because if you messed up, too big was going to stop and make us do it all over again anyway. We got into that habit where we knew where the steps were, where you were. If you were crisscrossing, we didn't bump into each other. And practice was always at 100%. Whether Hammer was there or not, it had to be at 100%. So we would practice all day, all night. Hammer may come at like one o'clock in the morning. We were still there practicing. And he'd come in and say, let me see what you got at 100%. And we did it. And that's what built up that stamina. The first time we went on Soul Train with Hammer, we did turn this mother out. And that was an experience because seeing Don Cornelius up close and personal, it was an honor. I actually got to be on a set that I've always wanted to as a child, and here I am. Are you, are you, guys, are you guys used to this? Oh, yeah. yeah. We've, we've been having a lot of fun, and the people really respond to what we're doing right now. I would say so. <laughs> You are? Sweet LD. <laughs> Terrible T. How 357 came about, Hammer, he had a concept for a girls group of Channel 357. And he looked at Little P and Sweet LD and myself and was like, you know what, you guys work together already. I think you are the concept that I want. We all said, definitely, yes. It was gonna be new because now we're up front and we're used to being behind, so that was definitely a big transition. In the beginning, when we started touring, we opened up for MC Hammer on the, it was I think 1991, that particular tour with Bobby Brown and Boyz II Men and all these different groups. We would open, as 357, and then Hammer was headlining, so we would go back, change the clothes, and get ready to be the posse. So we did double duty for a while. One of my most memorable moments with MC Hammer, we were on tour in Providence, Rhode Island. We were on tour with Bobby Brown. Prior to getting there, Bobby Brown was actually headlining, and Hammer was coming before. So I guess the promoters kind of felt to kind of switch up the lineup. Apparently, Bobby Brown's organization didn't like the switch. <laughs> so Bobby and them had went on and we went on after. And somehow in the middle of our show, the plug got pulled. Our sound was cut off. But because of the training that we went through in practice, we never stopped. We kept going, so all you heard was almost like we were in a frat house. You just heard the feet stomping, boom, boom, and we just kept going. Once they got the music back on, we were still on time. And the first song that we released was Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. The original members of 357 is Sweet LD, Little P and Terrible T. Once we had completed the album, Little P decided that she wanted to step back. So when it got time to do that first video, Hammer was like, okay, what are we gonna do? Well, let's add a couple of girls to kind of make it full. So he brought in a young lady named Stacy Phillips. She went by Sweet P. And then the other young lady, Claudia, she was one of the dancers that was in Bobby Brown's My Prerogative. She actually had the white guitar and short hair. We all four came together to do that very first video. So that's why there's four in that very first Yeah Yeah, yeah video. The concept with the swimming pool in there, and yeah, it was definitely cold. And whoever showed up late, there's the one that had to get in the pool. So of course I was on time. 
LD was on time. The other two young ladies, they was running a little late. So their part had to be <laughs> Juicy is definitely my favorite song. The concept of it, the video, the choreography, and then we did the remix when we put B. Angie B in there and she she did her thing. You knew what we were saying, but without coming right out saying it <laughs> up front that you know, this Juicy got you crazy. I'm gonna cut it off until it's get paid time. So it was just that undertone and then the, you know, the pump it. Tommy Briggs definitely designed a lot of the stuff that we did wear. And one of the outfits that Tony Briggs designed for us was definitely my favorite. It was pink, it was a two piece. He said it had the zipper, which you couldn't tell it had a zipper, it was so skin tight. But you had to slide into it and trust me, it held everything in. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the most comfortable, but it was definitely my favorite because it was so cute. And that's just one of the many that he did. Just like in Juicy, he did the half and half, the white and the red. His concepts were so fabulous. Capitol Records and Busted Records kind of didn't get along, so we ended up getting released. We got a phone call to meet. It was down at the rehearsal studio. It was Louis Burrell. He brought us in and was like, well, Capital released you. Sweet OD looked at me and I looked at her like, huh? And we just walked out. Once that meeting was over, it was just like defeated. It was like they took the whole win out and we stood in the parking lot, like, confused, because we was like, okay, we just did the photo shoot for the second album. We had just did all the promotion stuff to get ready to go out on the promo tour. I remember seeing Hammer that night and him driving off, like, he didn't say anything to us. I'm not sure if he knew what went on at that moment, but that was the last time I had talked to him for a while and and Sweet LD kind of went her way. And then I went on to pursue other things. I was looking into doing more music um, as a solo artist, but missing that other half of you, it was almost like we were twins. We were on tour for so long that normalcy, I didn't understand it. So going into a regular nine to five was hard. It was definitely surprising. And I think that was a shock, and a shock that sat in for a couple of years. Going to dance for other artists was definitely something I've always wanted to pursue, especially looking at, you know, Big Les, Flex, those dancers. I loved watching them. I always wanted to be, you know, on, in Living Color. I wanted to dance for Rosie Perez. I wanted her to be my choreographer in Josie Harris. But again, going back to how the organization was, and we were kind of sheltered. If you, you know, went and talked to other artists, you would have backlash. There was a lot of verbal abuse, I would say, not from Hammer himself, but who he put in charge of, you know, everybody just wanting to keep the crew, you know, these are hammer dancers, you're not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that. And it kind of limited to everything, so we didn't know where to go. And I've always wanted to dance for Janet Jackson. We actually had the opportunity, um, Sweet LD and myself, to do that, and was told no. <laughs> we were in LA, and she was doing a video or something, and she reached out and was like, hey, I'd like to get your hammer dancers, you know, come be in my video, and was told no. And then we didn't find out until after.
So a lot of doors were shut for us as far as dancing. Yo, T, if I could do it all over again, yes, I would. And then there's some things I would change, which is definitely being more connected with everybody. Because those were memories, too, that you don't get to have. You can replay them in your head, but the snapshots or the phone numbers or things of that nature, that is the only part of it that I would change. Other than that, the sacrifice, the blood, the tears, I'd do it all over again. I definitely would.